Welcome. I'd like to say I watched you this morning uh, over there. Uh, somebody said you were near Adelaide, so we all ran out to check you out. And uh, they said you were having a little trouble. I mean, it was pretty rough out there, a lot of big waves and all that. And I thought to myself, you know, they came in yesterday, and some of them came over to my office. We had a nice little chat and photos. How many of you were in my office yesterday? Three, quite a few of them. So I said to myself, wouldn't this be something if they were coming in for this ceremonial affair and something happened out there? So I was very concerned. I said, this just couldn't happen. They, they traveled all this way from Hawaii, and then because of a ceremony, they went out there again to Agate, and they're coming into a game. But luckily, you all came in because I know you have a good, good teacher. And I want to talk about Mr. Mao Piano. I understand, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to challenge you this morning after I, I finish with my few words. But you know, uh, Mr. Piano taught these young people here. Many of them are graduates in university and some are still students. Some are uh, elders with a lot of navigational experience, but he taught them. These are his students, and they thought as a fitting tribute, they would invite him to come along on this long trip so that he could come back and visit his roots. He is a Micronesian by birth, and uh, he's going to Saipan. I understand after this, you will be traveling on to Saipan in the canoe, and uh, visiting some of your relatives and your close friends there. And then after that, I asked them, are you going to take the trip back to Hawaii? They said, well, not really. We're going to put the canoe and a boat, and we're going to fly. <laughs> because the weather won't be so good. That's the one thing we have to watch, the, the storms. And we're coming into a season where the weather will not be so fine. So uh, they're going to take the easy way back home. But uh, Mr. Piola, I want to challenge you, since you taught all these young people in Hawaii how to bring this canoe over the waters, all these thousands of miles, can you now do the same for our people, the Chamorros? Can you come out and teach them so we know how to go over to the water? Okay? And to the captains and all of those who navigated over here, we'd like for our people to learn too. All right, so uh, I'll be waiting to hear from you. <laughs> I, I think what I liked the most about uh, Mr. Piola was his comment that he made. He wanted to devote his life to teaching the young people how to navigate the seas because many people who have these skills are keeping them all to themselves. And so I think this was a very generous offer. And I understand he even has relatives. He was here in Guam many years ago. He has a photograph taken 20 years ago in Maleso when he was there. He hasn't changed much except he's wearing glasses. But other than that, he looks the same. So uh, I want to thank you, uh, Mao, for bringing this group over here. And what a wonderful group of people. They were in my office last night. There's so much spirit and so much enthusiasm. I want this all to rub off on our own people here. All the Hawaiians living on Guam, okay? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this trip was meant as a testimonial to the navigational skills of the Pacific Islanders. And it provides more proof of seaworthiness of the same vessels of the forefathers of the Pacific Islanders. And it underscores the stamina and the physical abilities of our Pacific Islanders for rigorous and long ocean voyages, and they have proved it. It gives credit to the accuracy of the star and the wave charts used by ancient Pacific Island Islanders, and it gives credibility to thought that Pacific Islanders are descendants of the people navigating west from South America. You have proved so much, and we're
we're so very proud of you. And that's why we've given you this very warm and hospitable